and we are live what is up everybody this is like the quickest we've ever started an episode before josh joined in and we've been we're like boom we're in it anyways we are live welcome to episode five of hot stove after dark um i think we made that official obviously josh took his shirt off so you know that's i think that's the important uh, traps still killing it you know traps are looking good i'll tell you that much triple um, h two minus two years yeah, so uh, we decided to do an episode of After Dark this week. We're probably going to pepper more of these in as we go into the summer um, because we have less content to talk about, basically. Uh, so expect some, some more uh, interesting topics coming from us in, in the near future. But in the meantime, make sure to follow us on Twitter at Hot Stove Pod. That's at Hot Stove Pod on Twitter. And here on the YouTube side, make sure to smash the subscribe button, smash the like button, smash the notification button and leave a comment if you feel like commenting. Thank you for your normal fervor, Josh. I really appreciate it. Um, so today we got a, a bunch of stuff to talk about, right? We got trivia. And we're going to talk briefly about the Sam Darnold trade to the Panthers. Um, we have the conclusion of the NCAA tournament was this past weekend. Uh, yesterday. I don't want to yes, say that. Hey, it was 24 um, hours ago. So we'll, we'll talk about that. You guys are going to have to fill me in because I actually didn't watch a second of the national championship game. Uh, so, yeah. Uh, we got opening weekend of baseball that we're going to talk about, see if anything stuck out to us. And we're going to break down the greatest, well, one of the greatest weekends in all of sports uh, this weekend is the, Na is the Masters coming up at Augusta Nationals. So we'll be talking, we'll be breaking down the tournament what's to come and our of course our FanDuel contests excuse me and our FanDuel lineup uh, that comes with it so oh I forgot to introduce ourselves I'm Zach these are my hosts I'm Mark hey how's it going yeah. gentlemen hey, hey, especially if you're listening to this bullshit that's not even a normal show you already know what we're talking about this episode is sponsored by Cacti everyone's ah, favorite yeah. Travis Scott sponsored seltzer um it's not actually sponsored but if you want to pay us money I'll drink cacti on every episode. I'll drink liquid shit if it's sponsored. <laughs> <laughs> That's fair. That's fair. I do just about anything for a sponsorship. So I'll drink ass juice. I can tell you this: the strawberry flavor definitely better than the pineapple flavor. I I've only had the pineapple, so it was okay. The strawberry flavor is better. Okay. Okay. It's helpful. I bought. I got a case of it, so I, at some point I will tell you how the lime one tastes as well. But mm. um. Yeah, so that's that. Intros, we're done with that. So we got some trivia today. And from what I understand, I'm not the only one who has trivia. I've got three. I wrote God. two of them right now. And Austin, do you have it? No, you know, you had a trivia question, but we already talked about it, right? Yeah. Okay. So Mark, why don't you do your trivia first? Sure. I have one baseball and two Masters trivia questions. Oh, for the love of God. Yeah. What, what do you want first, uh, the Masters or baseball? Let's do baseball. All right. Baseball. I uh, saw this as I was scrolling through Wikipedia the other day, and I was like, wow, that's kind of amazing. Um, it, I was scrolling through Wikipedia with a purpose. I wasn't just like on the front page of Wikipedia. <laughs> um, but uh, – and I looked it up, and it is true, so it's not just someone being an asshole on Wikipedia. Uh who was the first shortstop in Major League history to hit a grand slam in the postseason? Roy Tulowitzki. Cal Ripken. No. Both of those are very solid guesses, I will say. Hmm. I mean, I just picked the best shortstop I could think of. Chase Utley. Second base. That's very much a second base. Jose Reyes. It's not Jose Reyes. <laughs> I thought it was money. Um, Derek Jeter. Nope. Um, Derek, if Derek Jeter hit one, that pitcher should lose. Daryl Strawberry, very much an outfielder. Dee Dee Gregorius, um, maybe it's like really recent. No, that's it, but I will give you this it is an active player. Okay. Oh, huh. Elvis Andrus. Mm -mm. Hmm. I think here. The Xander Bogarts. Is not Xander Bogarts. Mm -hmm. That would have been two on point. Xander Bogarts mm -hmm. into the playoffs. 
won the World Series. We talked about Twice. <laughs> yeah. Um, shit. Uh, mm-hmm. Yeah, I mean. I probably got a couple more guesses in me. Trey Turner? Not Trey Turner. Did you say Corey Seager, Zach? Yes. Wrong. Damn it. Mark gets, Mark gets off on the net. Yeah, he got my hopes up. Yeah, he really does. What the hell? Like beating us is the fun part. <laughs> um, trying to run through other shortstops in my head. Do they currently play shortstop or are they at a different position? They now? currently play shortstop. Okay. Carlos Correa. Not Carlos Correa, no. I was Marcus Simeon. Nope. Okay. Just another shortstop I know. Okay. Marcus Simeon. They are still on the team that they hit the Grand Slam for. That doesn't help, but uh, I'll think of shortstops that have been on the same team for a little while. Um, uh, I feel like this game is sad. Never mind. Uh, I like how you're, you're going to run through like 29 starting shortstops in baseball right now and just not be able to think of the last one. Probably, yeah. There's just no way I know this. Uh, is it Glaber Torres? Nope. I'm trying to think of every shortstop I can right now. Well, I'm trying. I'm also thinking of shortstops who have been to the playoffs. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You know, because yeah, like, mean... has Trevor Story been to the playoffs? No. Hey, Lindor. Oh, yeah. Oh wait, no, no. no. He doesn't play for. They, yeah, they, they did they, go to the playoffs. <laughs> Rockies they, were in the playoffs, but it's not yeah. Trevor Story. Yeah, I mean, I'm I'm trying to even think of a shortstop who would have hit a grand slam years ago maybe and it's still playing for that same team as the starter that's like a, not even can't even be that many to be honest no there's about one <laughs> dan's we swanson nope would have been last year <laughs> i was gonna say um i miss a grand slam <laughs> uh starlin castro what does he play for Plays for Plays Washington. For the National I, I would you like to know what year it happened? Sure. 2012. Shit. Oh, is geez. it Brandon Crawford? It is Brandon Crawford for the San Francisco oh, for Giants. the Giants. Yeah, that's funny. Yep, that's awesome. He's the I, only shortstop to hit a grand slam in the postseason. I it might have happened since we was the first. Gotcha. Okay. gotcha. Uh, all right. Now, the two – one of these, I think, for Josh and Austin might be a little easier. Well, it certainly um, won't be easy for me if it's not golf. I can tell you that much. One of these, I don't know if any of you will get. Um, do you want the easy one or the hard one first? No, hard one. Who has the most appearances at the Masters with 52? Tiger Woods. Jack, He's not no. 52 years old. Jack Nicholas seems too easy for this one. It's not Jack Nicholas. Um, Arnold Palmer. Nope, not Arnie. What about Sandy Lyle? No, not Sandy Lyle. Good guess. Good guess. We've legitimately run out of golfers that I know. Uh, ben Hogan. Nope. I don't even Gary know Player? any old golfers. Gary Player. Yeah. Gary Player has played in 52 Masters. Which is way too many. Is he teeing off this year? He is not. <laughs> he, I believe he'll be playing in the par three tomorrow, though. Oh, he's still alive? That's good. Not dead. Yeah, very much he's in a. He's in like a commercial where it's like, play golf. And it's like, okay, Gary Player. Is he on the Champions Tour? Is he, is he, old? Is he still on the old person's tour? No, he's 85. Oh. Yeah, but uh, two years ago, a video went viral of him doing a backflip off of his boat. He what? is in he is in I mean, better shape than most 40 year olds. He the, he's in better shape than me. He is in such ridiculously good shape, it's not even fun. Um damn, that was the hard one. Then we're gonna get the easy one in like one guess. Yeah, who's the oldest masters winner? Tiger Woods. Nope. Gary Player. Nope. <laughs> What'd you say? Who's the oldest winner? Mm-hmm. Jack Nicholas. It is Jack Nicholas in 1986 at the age of 46. That's old. That's all I got. Oh, it was easy. You bet you sure got that. Yeah, I I wasn't. I'm sorry. All right. Heads up. Right. As for usual, it's time for the trivia difficulty to ratchet up because it's my turn. Um, I, th- I, got I two- thought the Brandon Crawford question was hard enough. That was difficult. That was hard. good. 
Um, I got two baseball questions and a basketball question. The baseball question is Mark is allowed to participate in. The basketball question, Mark is not allowed to participate in. So we'll do the baseball questions first. From 2015 to 2019, so the last five full seasons. Yeah, five full seasons. What five players have the highest OPS in the month of April? Who has great starts? Um, they're, they're all active. Kurt, yes. I didn't know if it was someone that like retired last year. No, 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 no. This is this is in reference to players that are playing. Okay. Um, I would say Trout. Mike Trout is second. Mookie. Mookie is incorrect. Okay. Ooh. So I'll tell you, of the four players remaining, three are outfielders. One of them is an infielder. Uh, Justin Turner. Incorrect. Anthony Rendon. Incorrect. You're getting the position right, though. So it is. Yeah. Um, Chris Bryant? No. Eugenio Suarez? Also no. I was going to say, doesn't he hit like 30 home runs every July and then? <laughs> yeah, yeah. He, he, he's batting about 220 right now, I think, maybe. Like yeah. that, that's high for him. <laughs> um, Thanks. This is, uh, I, I'm going to start going for the outfielders. Uh, like I said, Blackman outfielders and an infielder. Charlie Blackman is not correct. I, I like oh. that guess. Cords is a good guess, though. Maybe none of these players are Rocky Rockies players. I was just saying it was a good guess. Was he a Bray who had a good uh, April once once upon a time? Didn't he? He does not play third base. So didn't you say? Oh, he doesn't even play outfield either. I'm just no. saying names now. Yeah, three outfielders, and I, I did confirm that the infielder is a third baseman. Yeah, I'm just trying to think of guys who get off. The Acuna? Road. Acuna? Acuna is incorrect. Ever healthy in April? <laughs> I thought he got injured then. Uh, yeah. Health concerns. I'll tell you, this list has some health concerns to it. What about Manny Machado? Incorrect. You guys are thinking too hard into it. Ballinger? Oh, no. Oh, cool. Yellick? No. What? Bryce Harper? Bryce Harper is third. Matt Chapman. Incorrect. <laughs> Nolan Arenado? Also incorrect. I said no course play. I'm Rocky. No, he's not a course player. I mean, he plays for the Cardinals. <laughs> God damn it. The entire time he played for the Rockets. <laughs> I, didn't no know, the I didn't know that. Yeah, I, I didn't know he played for the Rockets. Hmm. Two outfielders uh, and an infielder. You're missing first, fourth, and fifth. Nelson Cruz. Yeah, I was gonna say. Not Yelson Cruz. I can tell you for certain, the three of these players have each been marred by injury concerns during that entire span. Oh, Oh, then yellow luckily, enough, luckily enough for oh, them, judge is, uh, judge is first. Stanton is incorrect. So you're, you're missing fourth and fifth, and in, a third baseman and an outfielder. They're both American League players. Bregman? Incorrect. Not, not that he's really been, I mean. Jose Ramirez? No. I will say also you mentioned Nelson Cruz. Nelson Cruz is eighth. Honestly. Okay, I knew he would be up there. What in the barnacle brain is going on here? One of them is already injured this season. <laughs> Luke Voigt. Incorrect. <laughs> I'll tell you, one of these two players has collected some hardware during that span as well. All right, this is a shot in the dark. Ryan Zimmerman. Does not play third base. He did. <laughs> At did one he? point. <laughs> never played in the American League either. Well, that's debatable. 
there are interleague games. He's played in a couple oh, yeah, American yes. ballparks. Miguel Andujar. Not a That guy sucks. Not Miguel Andujar. <laughs> I thought he about that for a second. But... He did not win Rookie of the Year. Don't bring that up to Michael K, though. Oh, so who did he lose to that year? I know he had a Otani. short. Who? Otani. Oh. Yeah, the, guy, the guy that throws 100 and hits the ball 115 we're miles talking, an hour. We're talking um, AL? I mean, what are we talking yes. What are we talking about? You're making this up. It's not real. Rafael Devers? No. Oh. Oh. You guys Wait, have mentioned like 12. George Springer. Three. Incorrect as well. That was a good. Josh game. Donaldson. Austin, you are correct. Josh Donaldson is the third baseman in question yeah. fourth in that span. Were you about to say that, Josh? No, I was going to guess another third baseman and look like a fucking idiot. <laughs> okay, well, we're still missing the outfielder, and the final hint I'll give for him is that he's leading off for his team this year, a team that might not be very good, but at least has some interest to it. Um, Goodrum for the Tigers. No, and I'll tell you right now, it's not Whit Merrifield either. Ah, damn, that's what? Who's that? No, he's not good. <laughs> <laughs> I was thinking of the Mariners outfielder. I don't know if he. Mitch Haniger. Uh, no, Austin, you are correct. Mitch Haniger is fifth, and that's. <laughs> Yeah, you know, I was listening to a podcast today that was talking about when was the last time Mitch Anniger played a baseball game? It's been like two years. He's been hitting. He's just getting injured. Yeah, no, he well, he uh, in 2019 he fouled the ball off of his testicle uh, and missed pretty much the entire year because of that. Yeah, uh, wait, I was right. He's a Mariner. He is a Mariner. Yeah, you, he's, he's also like very he's good at baseball. That's why I said him. <laughs> he's he's also Mariner. he's also very good at baseball. He just needs to stay on the field. He's um, leading off? Yes. <laughs> That's pretty cool. Um, anyways, the, la- the last three to round out the top eight there, by the way, is uh, sixth is Michael Conforto. Uh, seven is Freddie Freeman. And eighth is Nelson Cruz. So those are the players with the highest OPS in the month of April. Where's this one? Uh, this one, I'm, gonna, I'm not going to lie, is even harder. Uh, I apologize. Right. <laughs> All right. I saw this on the ESPN um, broadcast the other night. So if you were watching, I think it was last night. If you were watching Monday Night Baseball, you might have seen, or no, it was during the day yesterday. Never mind. Because the ESPN had a quadruple quadruple hitter yesterday. I want you to name me the three players with the highest contact rate in Major League Baseball in the last two seasons. David Fletcher. So I'll give you a hint. Mark, you're correct. Mark, David Fletcher is second. I'll give you a hint. All three of them are second baseman. Nick Madrigal? No. Altuve? Oh, no. He, he doesn't qualify. Um, Whit Merrifield? No. Think deeper than that. <laughs> uh, dude, I saw – actually, the guy for Houston did it – or not Houston, uh, the Minnesota Twins today. Some loser has like – Oh, Luis Arias. Yeah, he's not some loser. He makes great contact, and Mark is right. It's Luis Arias. Well, I couldn't pull a name, but um, there you go. Eduardo Escobar. No. Man, I couldn't pull that guy's name if you gave me 20 minutes. All right, I'm going to be honest with you. I don't know as if you guys are going to get this third one. I didn't even know he was on a roster until today when I checked on when I fact-checked this. this uh, Ian Kinsler? No. It's Eric Sogard. You, Eric Sogard? Eric Sogard is third in Major League Baseball in contact rate over the last two seasons. I, I never would have guessed Eric Sogard. I love That's Eric fine. Sogard. Never would have guessed him. Oh, yeah, you're a huge Eric Sogard. You loved, loved him from all the way back when back he was in Toronto three years ago. You were a big Eric Sogard no, guy. Uh, no, I liked when he was in Oakland and they had all the guys in the stands that would, would always wear these, like, exaggerated glasses with nerd power signs. I always thought that was funny. Oh, that's pretty funny. Anyways, so, yeah. Uh, Luis Arise, David Fletcher, and Eric Sogard have the three highest contact rates in baseball. Yeah, isn't what's his name's like eighty eight percent that loser from the Twins? He's it's ninety two percent. Yeah, he yeah. never swings and misses. Yeah, David Fletcher is ninety one percent, and Eric Sogard is eighty nine percent. Sogard's right. got some sick facial hair. So, Mark, you can sit back for a second because this final trivia question 
is for Josh and Austin. Now this one has to do with basketball, specifically has to do with retired numbers and the Boston Celtics. So oh, okay, I was I was wondering why I was gonna sit this one out. So, Austin and Josh, I'm gonna have you go back and forth. I don't want everybody yelling at each other. Ah! I don't want to go. I want to go back and forth. Mark, can you do a coin flip for me real quick while I'm talking? Get a coin or do hey, it on uh, your phone. Siri. Wait, wait. Before you do it, flip a coin. Before you do it, Josh has the tails. Heads. All right, Josh's head's Austin's awesome tails. Flip a coin. Yes. <laughs> it is tails. All right, Austin. Austin, you go first. You guys oh, are gonna yeah. go. You guys are gonna go back and forth. The Boston Celtics have twenty-two retired numbers. I gotta say the number. No, no, no. You have to give me the person. Oh, so thank God. What's I gonna happen? <laughs> what I'm gonna do <laughs> is we're gonna go back and forth. And you guys each have three strikes. We'll stop playing when one of you gets three, when one of you gets three incorrect. All right. Okay. We're gonna go back and forth and see how many you get. Austin, you're first. Larry Bird. Correct. Josh. Is that right? Okay, okay. Uh Bill Russell. Bill Russell is also correct. Austin. Oh. Oh no, I don't have much left in the tank. That's that's about by my knowledge. Um I got nothing. I'll pass. Already? Take one strike. All I know is current players, they can't have their retired to retire number yet. Kevin Garnett. Incorrect. Eh. Kevin McHale. Kevin McHale. Uh you are correct, Josh. Austin? Uh, I don't know all these old timers. Uh, like- Bob Cousy. Bob Cousy. I remember that guy. Bob Cousy is correct. <laughs> all right. Uh, R.I.P. Sam Jones. Sam Jones is correct. Austin? Uh, uh, ha- I don't know how to say it. Havlicek? Is that John right? John Havlicek is correct. Josh? Uh, Mark, you remember that old Deadhead song? The Casey Jones is saying What? Yeah. Casey Jones? <laughs> You're correct, Josh. Casey Jones is another one. Riding that train. Hi, Uncle. Uncle. Casey All right, Austin, Jones another one. Better watch your speed. <laughs> There's more? <laughs> there are many more. And I- what? Do I get a chance after this to get a few points by just rattling some of them off? Yeah. Robert Robert Parrish. Awesome. That's correct. That's the Gosh. last one I got. That's it. I don't... That that might have been the last. <laughs> That's what I had too. Oh, I'm trying to think of 2K right now. Like yes, playing yes. 2K in my mind. Um. All right, they got it. Retired this guy's number, right? Uh, I know you said no. He, there's no way they did. I'm hoping that. They did after Kobe died. Paul Pierce, the truth. Paul Pierce is correct. Damn it. I Austin. wanted that. I was going to say that next. That was my free answer. Uh, Brian Scalabrini. <laughs> that was right. my troll. I Josh. was thinking that was my... All right. This one, this one, there's, there's just no chance. But he did win a ring. James Posey. It's a deep pull, but no, James Posey is James not Posey. correct. James Posey. You know, Celtics great. James Posey. <laughs> I just got to hope he can't pull another one out of his ass so I can win this thing. Austin, last strike. What Do you have anything? I, I know this bum barely played for this team, but Bill Walton? Bill Walton is incorrect. <sighs> Josh, this is your last strike as well. Yeah, you could. My last strike? I thought I, I, I got – Oh yeah, he hit. I started. Yeah, yeah. You got to get one to finish. Oh fuck yeah, I got to get one to win. Um, Say it, dude. Shit. Okay. Okay. Who is? Oh god. This isn't even gonna be something like I'm gonna be upset about when I look it up. I I I don't care about people over the age of forty. 
I mean, the Celtics didn't play in the 90s, right? So that didn't count. Wait, <laughs> this son of a bitch, could he have done it, Austin? Do you think he did it? Do you think he retired his own number, Danny Ainge? I was thinking the same thing. I was thinking the same thing. Did he do it? No, Danny Ainge is no. incorrect. No. I, was no. I wish he did. I, ding, 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 ding. We run to the end of the game. Rajon Rondo. No. Rajon Rondo's incorrect. Between Josh and Austin, they were able to get Eight. nine of the 22 nine. retired one. Celtics, one. Celtics numbers. Uh, Austin got four. Josh got five. So congratulations to Josh. You're the winner. Josh, you get five points added on to your trivia score. Austin, you get four. Now, Mark. I can't fact, name all 22. I'll, I'll do 13 left. I, yeah. I, I can't name all 22. I need you to name me the 13 that are left. I'll tell you who's been named. I, I can can't. Name, I won't be able to get all 13. Okay. I, can, I want you to give me as many as you possibly can. So this is who's been named already. Bill Russell, mm-hmm. Bob Cousy, John Havlicek, Sam Jones, Casey Jones, Kevin McHale, Larry Bird, Paul Pierce, and Robert Parrish. There are 13 names remaining. Mark, how many of them can you give to me? I can give you Walter Brown, number one. Walter Brown Ooh. is correct. Uh, Red Auerbach, number two. Also correct. Dennis Brown Johnson, Auerbach number on there three. Too? Dennis Johnson, number three. You are correct. Um, Jojo White, I think he was number oh. 10. Oh, I remember that guy. Jojo yeah. White was number 10, and his number has been retired by the Celtics. Um, Tommy Heinsohn, number 15. Yes. Who the hell's Tommy uh, Heinsohn? Tom Sanders, number 15. Tom Sanders? Tom Sanders was number 16, but still, yes. Do they also? Oh, no, that's not... Yeah, that's what I said. Do these players have oh, to also like play basketball, or can they just be random names that they decided to retire? <laughs> um, Dave Cowens, number 18. Correct. Um, Reggie Lewis, number 35. Uh, yes. And it's not a number, but they have, I think he was an owner, his name hanging in the rafters. I, I think it's Losky is what's in the rafters. Um, I can't, um, wow. As a- L- Loskatov? His name was Jim, Jim Loskatov, and he was a, I, I believe he was a player but when they retired his number, he said that he didn't want to retire the number. He wanted players to continue to work. Yes. So they retired yeah, that's right. his name instead. Hey, who the hell did Reggie Lewis have to suck off to get this fucking retirement? He, he died. Played, he played six <laughs> he <died. seasons. laughs> He died. Even worse. So they're just letting dead people get the retired jerseys? He sucked. He was an average player. He played <laughs> six seasons for this team. Averaged 20 points twice. This he guy's a died. <laughs> He was an all star. He died. He's a bum. Lewis jersey on the way. He's a bum. <laughs> James Posey's got as much of a right to that if, if Reggie Lewis does. Anyways, I mean, so the names we missed. I, I got about? one more. Oh, okay. Yeah, Mark. Um, I think they retired his number. Uh, Cedric Maxwell, number 31. That is correct as well. Cedric Maxwell. That's all I got. All right. So Tom between the three of you, you missed four names. Sucked. You got 18 in total. The ones you missed were Don Nelson, number 19. Oh, Don, yep. Bill oh, yeah, Sharman, Don Nelson. Bill Sharman, number 21. Ed McCauley, number 22. And Frank Ramsey, number 23. Dude. Those are the ones you missed. Mark, you got Don one, two, three, Nelson. four, five, six, seven. This dude averaged eight. 15 points once in his career. Mark, you got 10. Correct, by the way. Look at that. This guy was a career 10 points, 4.9 rebounds per game player. He got his jersey retired? Didn't take a lot back. What's he doing behind the scenes? Uh, What what? years did he play? Uh, 62 to 76. Yeah, well, he was a white guy who played basketball in the 60s. Therefore, he got his number retired. That's how that works. He's probably in the Hall of Fame. I I don't know if you know anything about uh, early Celtics basketball. There's a lot of titles in there. Yeah. I mean, yeah, but I don't even think he was a starter. He, no he, aver- he averaged less than 20 minutes per game in his career. <laughs> Dude, but he was there. He won a lot of. Uh, he, he was a lot of work guy, you Mark, know? that guy's just cheeks. <laughs> oh, no, he's good. very bad. I'm not, I'm not the what? best play. Uh, like, okay. But. All right. All right. All right. All right. 
so that's it for trivia. This is we're like the Celtics 40 minutes are into dead the to me now. All right. The Celtics are dead to me. So excuse me. Uh big news in the NFL yesterday. Sam Darnold got traded to the Panthers for a second this year and a fourth and a sixth next year, right? I thought it was a fourth this yes. year and a second and a sixth next year. No, sixth this year, four or second and fourth next year. Yep. Oh, okay. You're right. You're right, Zach. A second this year and a fourth and a sixth next year? No, sixth this year, second and fourth next year. Yes. Oh, okay. Um, Aaron Judge just hit a home run, so that was cool. Big time deep? Uh, yeah. Yeah, it went pretty deep. Seven up. Like oh. <laughs> um, it looks like it was a three-run homer. Man, I wish those guys pitched for the Orioles when we played them. Um. Hmm. Uh, well, they did, and the Red Sox just couldn't hit him. Uh, John Means was nasty on opening day. I'm just John Means that. business, but he's also not pitching tonight. So, <laughs> John Means was nasty. All right, shut the yeah. fuck up. Anyways, Sam Darnold got traded to the Panthers. Um, what do you guys think about the trade? I have my own opinions, but I, w- I want to hear your guys' input on it first. If it was just a fourth and a sixth, I'd be fine with it. Throwing the second in there is, uh, I don't know. I mean, about that. A second next year's second for a team that you know would like to be in the playoffs at that point. So it shouldn't it should be like an outside top 50 pick. And and it's for a guy who is still, I mean, I think Sam Darnold is younger than I am. If I'm Sam's a fun fact for you. Sam Darnold is younger than Joe Burrow. Yeah, that's what I'm saying. He's 20, isn't he 22 right now? He's 22. He's got as much as 22. Yes, he's a yeah. He was drafted at eighteen. He was dra- he's like he's my oh, age. He's all right. I I, I'm I'm gonna be, I thought Sam Darnold was twenty five. I I didn't realize he was. He's oh. got as much of a ceiling. I think as, he's twenty three, but that's beside the point. Okay, my bad, my bad. But he's got as much of a ceiling as any dude in this draft class in my mind. I think. I mean, he's he's still there. Raw talent's still there. I mean, the fact that he turned the ball over like nothing is dookie. But you saw this man, I mean, looking like Lamar Jackson out there against the Denver. Oh, that's true. That did happen. You he saw it? Like a 70-yard touchdown against the Yes. Against the Dude's got wheels. You know me. I'm team Sam Darnold hive, right? I'm, part, I'm part of the Sam, Sam Darnold hive rise up. That's me. I'm part of that hive. So. I mean, I've just I, never never been huge on him. I don't know. I, I, don't I like know. it. I like it for both sides. Um, like it's a, it's a mutually good trade. Um, because the fact that the Jets were able to ring three picks out of someone who is probably the most devalued top 10 quarterback that we've seen in trade scenario. I mean, Rosen, yeah. well, Rosen got a first round pick in return, in return for him. Oh, well, I, I get you. I, yeah. This is what I'm saying. Like at this point, Sam Darnold is worth less to NFL GMs, obviously considering this trade than Josh Rosen was a year ago. Uh, which is fucking insane, but it is what it is, right? Because Josh Rosen is legitimately Dookie Cheeks. Um, but I don't know. I, I, th- I tend to think that for one of the most uh, devalued um, products that the, the NFL has had in a while, um, just by proxy of, you know, where he was taken and the fact that he was saddled with Adam Gase for, for three years, um, you know, it's, it's stunts your growth. And I, I think getting out of there and getting into a system that I really, really believe in with Joe Brady and Matt rule. Um, I'm excited to see what happens with the Panthers this year. And the fact that they were able to keep the eighth pick and move uh, and get, and, you know, and get a quarterback that's still super young. Yeah. He's only like 18 months older than Mac Jones. Uh, is another fun fact for you. So like, Look, age-wise, he's basically the same as any other, as any other yeah. quarterback in this draft I, class. With four years of NFL experience. Exactly. Three, I had no, no idea. idea. The only problem I have with the deal from the Panthers' side of it is, like, they're in such a competitive division right now. I don't know that Sam Darnold is as much of a step up at quarterback. I mean, obviously, hopefully he will be, like, if they can coach him right. I just don't know that he's as much of a step up as they need to actually be competitive in the division. It's possible, but also like, I don't think they're trying to be, they, I think they would be wise to not, you know, be in the business of competing this year. 
Like, I, I think even if last year their defense overperformed, I, I still think they're fairly early in the rebuild process. That's fair. Yeah. Yeah. And they got him at, at, at a low enough price that they they still have wiggle room moving forward, you know? Yeah. Yeah. The Jets got to be happy. I mean, a yeah. second round pick on a Sam Darnold team is basically a first round pick. <laughs> oh, this, this guy. <laughs> guy's a freaking jokester over here. <laughs> okay, you guys got the funnies. Poor, and poor Robbie Anderson can't get away, man. Right. I mean, it's look, so it's been well documented the post case effect, right? Um, with Robbie Anderson as well. So, I mean, Kalen Balaj looked like an actual NFL player after he left, after he uh, got finished with Adam Gase. You know? Yeah. Uh, beforehand, he was averaging like 1.8 yards per carry. Frank Gore was coming off some of the most productive older seasons we've ever seen. Now he goes to Adam Gase and he turned on for 300 yards a season. What happened there? <laughs> I don't know. Maybe it's 38. <laughs> no, no. It's Look, Adam I'm Gase. saying that there is a pronounced post Adam Gase effect. Devontae Parker. Yeah. He yeah. thought he was one of the biggest wide receiver busts of the last five years. Mm-hmm. Coincidentally, the first year without Adam Gase, he's good. Le'Veon Bell. <laughs> yeah, Le'Veon Bell. Uh, <laughs> it's another Nine, these jet, these old Jets running backs would have been a lot better. Yeah, yeah. I yeah. bet you Samaje Piran's gonna go crazy this year. Oh yeah, it, wherever the hell he is. Thirteen hundred yards guaranteed. Yeah. So I don't know. I like it for both sides. Well, I guess we'll see I what like, happens. I like anybody getting away from Adam Gase. You're absolutely. You're goddamn right, Austin. That's all I like to hear. Okay. Adam Gase sucks. That's, That's, it. That's all I gotta say. Did he get hired somewhere? Is he a coordinator or something? No, no. So last I heard that he last I heard he was like, uh, he there was mutual interest for him to join Alabama's coaching staff. Yeah, yeah, that's right. That's what I was saying. I don't know if if he ever he I don't know if he has a job currently though. Yeah, I don't believe he does. I think it'd be kind of funny if he joined Alabama. See if he can tank the program. Maybe he seems to have that effect. So. Um, I got a text from one of my housemates that just said Dane Dunning doing the thing. So I assume Dane Dunning is pitching well tonight. Who is, can I ask a question? Yeah. Who? Uh, he's a pitcher for the uh, Rangers. Texas Rangers. Yeah. Oof. He, well, he, was with the, he was with the White Sox last year. He was part of the Lance Lynn trade. Mm-hmm. Okay. Um, Garrett Cole did a thing tonight. Garrett Cole did do the thing tonight. 12 Ks. Yeah. Probably the first starting pitcher to go throw a pitch in the seventh inning this season. Uh, yeah, but also we're like three days into the season. It's not that big of a feat. Tower Glass now is doing the thing tonight. Uh, Dane Glass Dunning is going to continue to do the thing. Dane Dunning has, uh, is through five, five innings, one earned six strikeouts against the Blue Jays. So. He's doing uh, Tyler Glasnow versus the Red Sox tonight. Uh, six innings, one run, nine strikeouts. Okay, so, so here's the difference. The Blue Jays have a good lineup. Oh, come on, man. Red Sox. And in Tyler Glasnow fashion. Do the Red Sox have a good lineup? They just got shut down by the Orioles pitching staff this past weekend. Whoa, whoa, whoa. Yeah, but they also have – Verdugo, Martinez, Bogart, They also have, Devers? like, one of the best Devers? players in MLB so far this season. That's Jay great. Martinez. That, that's that's great and all, but like, still haven't scored any fucking runs. Well, JD Martinez has scored yeah, all the runs it, on his own. JD Martinez is doing all he can, and the rest of the lineup is is limping up behind him. I don't know if you noticed, none of the, no Red Sox players were on your April OPS list. So, yeah, they all get, right. they, I forgot they're a real they're a team that's going to spice it up. Start come June. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. Forgot about that. They're really yeah, come June when we're hey, 13 if we, games if we under took 500. Just the first series, the Yankees lineup sucks too, right? Wait, what'd you say? We took just the first series, Three. the Yankees lineup is Dookie Cheeks too. Yankees lineup is like is, is actually overrated, but we won't talk about that. Um, like maybe I just hate hate my own favorite team, but yeah. Hot though. Hey man, you got 
Hey, Jay Bruce hit a home yeah. run. I, I'm calling for only Yankee yeah. fans to shut their mouth about Jay Bruce. Jay Bruce is dropping dick. All right. They're all they're all shit talking Jay Bruce with Odor Jay Bruce fucking out. sucks. Okay. And there he goes again. That no. home run shouldn't count. No. That home run shouldn't count. Yankee fans don't want it. They don't want what him the hell? Take Okay, it so we had this I had this conversation with someone the other day. I think Gary Sanchez is bad. Maybe he's not bad this year. I don't know. Maybe he's, no, he's back bad. to being average. Um, but when he hit the home run on on opening day, I was like, I was, I was like, oh, still sucks though. But like, go Yankees. And my thing is like, I'll give a shit how bad I think he is. It's not like I'm gonna root against him. That would be stupid. Mm-hmm. Take it back. Jay Bruce is is bad. Take oh, the runs off the also, board. Yankee fans don't want it. Before we get into uh, our next. Our next, uh, our next topic or whatever the hell we're going to talk about. I got, I got an update for you guys. So Mark and I, the other day, we're talking about the average age on home runs hit on opening day, because this year it felt like a bunch of old dudes were hitting home runs on opening day. Now yeah. I haven't gotten the data for all of it, uh, but I decided, and I'll finish it at some point, maybe tomorrow. Um, I'm going to go back for the last 10 years of opening days. From 2012 to 2021. When, when we talked, you said you were going to do like three or four. Yeah, it got out of hand. Not uh, enough data. I'm going to go back to 2012 and see the average age for players that hit home runs on opening day. So originally, I was going to do the, the last five from 2017 to 2021. So, and then I decided to expand it. The, the years that I have right now, data for is 2017, 2018, 2019, and then 2012, because I went back and started from the beginning. So I can give you early returns here. Uh, it looks like it means nothing, just about. Uh, the average age of home runs hit on opening day in 2012 was 29 and a half, um, with the oldest home run coming from Raul Abanez, who hit a home run at the age of 40 for the Yankees on opening day in 2012. Big poppy. He was, he was 40 in 2012? Yes. Raul Abanez is 50 now? <laughs> <laughs> what the hell? Um, other old people who hit home runs, Carlos Lee hit a home run on opening day. He was 36 years old. Um, Adam Dunn hit a home run that day. He was 32 years old at the time. Um, youngest player to hit a home run on opening day in 2012, coincidentally, was Jay Bruce. Uh, he was 25 at the time. He was the youngest Respect, king. So this was easily the oldest opening day of the four that I measured. 2017, the um, average age was 27.4, um, mm-hmm. which the with the youngest home run coming from Carlos Correa, who was 22 at the time, and the oldest home run coming from Ian Kinsler, who was 35 at the time. Uh, 2018, the average age was 28.9, so a, a one and a half year increase from 2017. Uh, the youngest home run was Ozzy Albies, who hit home run at the age of 21 on opening day in 2018. And the oldest home run came on t- in opening day 2018 was from Albert Pujols, who was 38 or 52. We don't quite know his age on opening day in 2018. Uh, and then in 2019, the, the average age was back down to 28. Uh, the youngest home run being Cody Bellinger. Was 23 in 2019, and the oldest home run being Robinson Cano, probably his one and only game before a steroid suspension that year. He was 36 uh, at the time. Yeah. So. Yeah, I'm. I'd be surprised if the average age this year is under 30. It seemed old. Like we had Pablo we Sandoval. Talking, yeah, uh, it was Sandoval, Posey, Longoria, as Drubal Cabrera, Miguel Cabrera. Did, did was it Posey who hit two? No, Posey hit one the next day. Oh, and did Longoria, it... Longoria and Posey both went back to back games with a home run. Gotcha. Um, but Stephen Vote hit one on opening day. Like seeing Stephen Vote as the opening day starting catcher for the Diamondbacks was wild. Uh, but yeah, it was like. And those are those are just the ones I saw. Like those are just the ones I watched as they were happening. So, yeah. Well, I will, I will report back next week with the full findings. I'll make sure to finish it before then. Mm-hmm. Um, I will say, in 2018 was an interesting year. A lot of players. So I usually track the players that were 32 or older that hit home runs in that year. 
Um, yeah. Like I wrote them down in, in 2018, one, two, three, eight players, the age of 32 or above hit home runs on opening day. Uh, pool host Nelson Cruz, who was 37 at the yep. time. Uh, Yadier Molina, uh, Nick Markakis, uh, Brett Gardner hit a home run on opening day in 2018. Adam Jones hit a home run on opening day in 2018. Jonesy. Lucas Duda hit a home run on opening day in 2018. As did Zach. 32 in 2018? Yes. As did Zach Cozart hit a home run on opening day in 2018. That's a name I haven't heard in a long time. Uh, There were six in 2019. Cano, Matt Joyce, was 34 at the time. Adam Jones, again. Uh, Neil Walker hit a home run on opening day. Uh, Andrew McCutcheon uh, and Michael Brantley both hit home runs that day. And one of note that wasn't 32, but was a pitcher, uh, was uh, Euless Chassin hit a home run on opening day in 2019. Now you may wonder, Zach, he's a reliever. How would he hit a home run? Great question. I don't know. I don't know. I just he wasn't know he a reliever up. back then. He was a starter for a long time. Oh, well, there you go. Euless Chastain hit an opening day home run in 2019. Yeah, he was the opening day starter for the Brewers um, oh. that year. And before that, he had, he was a starter for six or seven years with the Rockies. There you go. All right, there you go. The more you know. Anyways, uh, I will make sure to update you all next week on my opening day research. And we'll see if we have any uh, discernible data coming out of it. I doubt it. I, I'm sure it'll just be a bunch of numbers that mean nothing, but we'll see what happens. Um, let's move forward here an hour into the show and talk about um, the NCAA tournament. I mentioned that I didn't actually watch the game last night. I have I have no reason why I didn't. Uh, I just didn't. Now, from oh, you what I understand, probably- what did you say? I said you hate college basketball, so that makes sense. I didn't say that. I've never once said I hate college. No, no, basketball. there were men playing last night, Mark. He would. He's definitely. Oh, that's true. He was doing it on that. Sunday night. <laughs> I saw, I'm sure he saw the Stanford. I, uh... I did actually watch the game on Sunday night. Yeah, I did. Yeah, a, symp- <laughs> a, a sympathy watch out of him, of course. Right, 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 right. That was a hell of a game. I also watched that game. Yeah, that was it, a great game. That was a really good game. It was. Um, but I didn't watch last night, and from what I understand, Baylor led the whole game, right? Yeah, yeah, they got off to a nine nothing run to start, and they just continued punching Gonzaga in the face. All right. Well, I, mean, I assume Josh is going to say something really disparaging about Gonzaga. No, I'm going to say I'm I'm, no. I'm pretty passionate on this topic. I, yeah, let, let Austin take it. I'll revive it. I I'll, I'll be reserved when I when I talk about this. I'll just say anybody outside of Gonzaga homers watched that game and understood that Gonzaga did not belong on the same court as Baylor. I don't know if it was just last night they were the worst team, worst game they've played all season or what, but they didn't look as athletic, as talented. I mean, obviously Jalen Suggs is as talented as anyone on that court, but outside of that, it didn't. The other guys, awesome. like what Timmy, about your favorite player, yeah. Timmy? Timmy was getting bullied. He is a guy who weaves his way, gets offensive rebounds, is so skilled he can score pretty much on anybody. But he got just, hurt last night, though. Yeah. Yeah, he he had a leg issue he was dealing with, so I'll give him that. Like, yeah, that's that's fair. It just it just felt like to me, like at least the big from the big man perspective, Baylor's guys were just more athletic, stronger, could jump higher. It just it just looked like a bad matchup for Gonzaga. And I yeah, I'm two takes from this game for me are that one, I'm kind of glad they didn't win at all. Only for the fact that now they're probably not up there in the same echelon of college basketball's like greatest teams. Like, I don't think this team had any business being talked about with like the 82 Tar Heels or like the 84 Hoyas or like, oh, Matt- oh, oh shocker. Throw it up the in, to throw it in. I mean, that's one of the best teams in college basketball. Just, I mean, brought up, like the undefeated Indiana team from 76 or like, yeah, you know, I was, yeah, I was getting on a, the Florida <laughs> team from the mid two thousands. No, yeah. Sure. You had to bring up the Hoyas. I mean, also again. the 84 Hoyas had Patrick Ewing. So, Okay, a lot and, of a lot of college basketball teams have had Hall of Famers on them. Yeah, which, which, which team did LeBron play for? <laughs> they won it all. That's fine. The point here is also that, that I just don't think that team is on the same echelon of those that tier of play like teams. Yeah, you're right. The Florida teams with Noah in the mid two thousands, uh, even Kentucky's team like five years ago, they went undefeated and won it all. Right. So 
They did not win at all, but they did they go didn't, undefeated in the no, regular season. They didn't season. win at all. Okay, my bad then. But I mean, it's, point two to be made here from this game is like if Gonzaga wants to consider themselves as a like a blue blood nowadays, like they need to they need to be in the Pac-12. Like there's no reason yeah. that team just shouldn't play basketball in the Pac-12. That's fair. I will say they have I, – I would say they have earned blue blood status. They've made the tournament like – they have the longest tournament streak in the NCAA now. Yeah, I think it's 22 yeah. years. Yeah. 22 straight years. Uh, that's what I'm saying. Like if they want to be – but even then, if you want to be a blue blood, stop playing in the Mountain West, stop getting a free – or stop getting a free ride every year and come play – To be fair, if they played in the Pac-12, they would also get a free ride every year. I don't I know. Mean, they would, the but they also had the have best- – yeah, they'd have to play UCLA twice. They'd have to play USC. Twice. I'm not saying they'd they go undefeated. I'm just saying, even as currently constructed, they're still easily the best team in that conference. Mm-hmm. Sure, sure. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah, but it would also yeah. just help them a lot more. I mean, I think it'd be a win-win for college basketball, Gonzaga's program, and the Pac-12. Every- Gonzaga's also getting a lot West. of good recruits now. Ev- like- everyone wins except for Pepperdine. Are we okay with that? Are we okay with that? I don't even know where Pepperdine is located. Neither do I. Nobody does. I I disagree with Austin in the sense that, like, you know, Gonzaga, they were a really good team. Like, I'm not going to say they didn't belong on the same court as Baylor. Because obviously Baylor really outplayed them last night. Well, I think what Austin said was just that last night they did not. Well, yeah, last night they didn't look good. But that's a team that, I was fairly confident going into the tournament was like everyone was that was going to be a championship level team Um, because I get they played in the mountain West, but if you look at their non-conference schedule, it was Virginia, UNC, Iowa. It was, it, yeah. And they stopped. Yeah. Like it was, and I would say it wasn't UNC, just like Iowa, Virginia. It was beating Virginia by 30. Yeah. And they back. stopped every one of those. Games yeah. And, well, that's what I was going to get to is that they won all of those games by double digits, except for one. And that was West Virginia who they only beat by like six. I think. Was that their last non double digit win? They won like 24 in a row by double digits. They only had two UCLA and uh, West Virginia. Yeah. (laughs) So they played the competition. They were like, you know what? We're going to play these at the time, top 25 teams, obviously some of them didn't end up being top 25, but at the time they were teams that were ranked and they were really good. And they were like, we're going to play them. And we were going to blow them out of the water. And they did that. And, you know, then they had the conference schedule, which is like, all right, whatever, you know? Yeah. We'll beat Pepperdine by 40. That's mm-hmm. cool. Well, come on. What about St. Mary? Know, dude? That's true. Yeah, St. Mary's St. Mary's like, is actually whatever. usually they, pretty good, though. They're usually yeah, a, they are, but team. they don't they they don't hold a candle to mm-hmm. Gonzaga yeah. though, so it doesn't matter. Like, so and they are getting a lot of good recruit uh, recruits, and I like Gonzaga moving forward. They're gonna lose Suggs. Um, I what thought he was a Timmy? senior. That's what I got. Well, not well, even if he's gonna be a top think, five pick in the draft, so I don't give a shit what year he is. You said I don't Timmy? Think top five. Is Timmy no. going to go in the first no, round? No, no, no. I oh, thought you were talking about Suggs. I thought, no, yeah, 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 yeah. I, no, I was talking about Timmy. Um, Timmy, from what I understand, is currently projected to be like a late first rounder kind of guy. Wow. Yeah. So they're going to lose Suggs and Timmy, but yeah, there's a lot of really good guys that want to go to Gonzaga now. I mean, the, and the, yeah, I just, you, I, I was rooting for him. I bet Baylor, which, same. you know, but. Um, I, I would, I sort of wanted Gonzaga to win. Like mm. that's a team that I want to see him get over the hump. I want to see them win a title. Haven't they, didn't they I, win one like the year before? Didn't they win one in 2019? No. Virginia no. won in 2019. No, Gonzaga's never won. Are you sure? Um, oh, they, oh yeah, I'm I remember now. Yes. Yeah. Um, but I want to see them win. I like Mark Few. I like the head coach a lot. He seems like a really nice guy and he's been there a long time and he deserves it. Um, but I, I sort of like where they're going moving forward too. It's tough in college, you know, when it's like you have so much turnover on your roster year to year, but it seems like they're pretty well set up to keep being a 
you know, not only just tournament team, but a team that'll consistently make the sweet 16, the elite eight, the final four. I, I, I was a little disappointed even as, like I said, like, you know, I wanted to win money, but I also wanted to see Gonzaga win kind of. So, well, yeah. even then, to be fair, Gonzaga has been a consistent, I mean, they've been a one seed each of the last three years or something like that. Yeah. Yeah. And they, they had a good chance to win the title last year before the, March Madness got canceled. Like, yeah, but we know the Dayton Flyers would have gotten in the way of those plans. Right. Yeah. I think yeah, they were a one seed heading into the tournament. Yeah. Like, yeah. and San Diego That's State a- were both one seeds heading into the tournament. tournament. Yeah. That would have been a fun. That would have been yeah. awesome. Last that would have been a great tournament. Yeah. yeah. Dayton I, sort of fell off this year. Um, I think the thing <laughs> this year, too, Mark, I told Austin this last night when we were watching it. Scott Drew, the Baylor men's head coach has to be the most valuable player of the tournament, which I know. Oh, yeah. He did a fantastic job coaching. That. Taking a team that looked out of cahoots. Like, they were a one seed, obviously, but they looked like they were lost. They, Austin mentioned they had some guys from COVID near the end of the year that went out, but they had lost, like, two of their last five down the stretch, losing in the Big 12 tournament early. Like, they just didn't look good at all going into this tournament. And they dominated every single game. Every single yeah. the last two games, they won by combined like 40 points. That's crazy. Yeah. They just stopped. Props to that guy. If and I like props. Scott Drew, too. They showed that clip during the game last night of his introductory press conference. I didn't realize. Oh, that. dude, he's been around for so long. <laughs> I, I didn't yeah. realize it was 2003. Yeah. That, I, I, didn't I, thought he, I thought he had been there for like 10 years. I didn't realize that he's closing in on 20. Like they showed they, they showed the stat last night, or maybe it was on Sports Center this morning. Going into Scott Drew's tenure as Baylor head coach, they had won a total of three NCAA tournament games in their school's they've history. Won 16 now. Or 17. Since he's become the host since he's become the coach, they've won 16 NCAA tournament games, including now a national title. So look at that team's records. Right before he gets there, they they're winning like five six games a year. Like they're like going like six and twenty. Yeah, they and said he during gets the there game last and night, he just turned that entire program around instantly. Yeah, his first three years, he had a combined I want to say twenty one wins. Yep. In his first three years, and he completely turned around. And like that's why it was so tough to pick who I wanted to win last night because few and um, I'm blanking Drew. on uh, Drew. Um, they've both earned it. They've both been there a long time. They've both put in the work, and it was great to see Scott Drew win a game um, or win the game. Rather, yeah, well, I, I can also say that yeah, I think I, I think we can kind of wrap it up here that, like, it was a good tournament. Like, in, like in general, it was a really good tournament this year. Yeah. I think – I personally think this tournament was a little bit like it was great seeing it and there were a lot of really good upsets, but as a tournament, I thought it sort of played out according to schedule. I don't know. Crap ton of upsets. I mean, it didn't end up doing too much minus UCLA, but but like. Yeah. The upsets came where you expect the upsets to come. You expect upsets in the first. First and second round. But then you had an 11 seed make the final four. I like, feel like we could legitimately have yeah, this conversation. You see a the exception. I feel like we could legitimately have this conversation every tournament. I'm sure if we looked back, like, the week after every tournament, we were like, yeah, all the good upsets came in the first weekend. And then, like, there was one 10-plus seed, seed that yes. surprised us, and then everything else kind of went according to plan, you know? Not to the level – it's usually not also, to the level – it's usually not to the level of two one seeds making the national championship. Sure. Maybe there's like a three seed thrown in there or yeah. something like that. But like, I don't know. I, I, I think I, the games themselves were fantastic. That's what I was talking about. Yeah. Overall, it was a great tournament to watch. But I will say only one buzzer beater is a little disappointing. Yeah, it's unfortunate, it but it's, oh, it oh, speaking of which, before we stop talking about this, can we just talk about, can we, can we talk about Skip Bayless before <laughs> Or are you fucking move what are these? On? Yeah. Oh, why why does everyone care so much about this? It was a lucky shot. Fuck you, Skip Bayless. I mean he said he said something along the lines of you can't call it one of the greatest games in college history. And Josh is about to defend it. I can guarantee no, no, no. you. You can you can't call it one of the greatest games in college history if it was won on a lucky shot. What the fuck does that even mean? 
overtime, an 11 seed versus the best team in the country. And it, like, God, it was a great show. What a, what a way to according, take away from the kid, to too. Practice. You're acting like he, like, turned around and threw a backwards blindfolded shot from his own freaking... No, he had a good it shot. It was a good shot. I don't understand. It's... I mean, yeah. Does it shock you that Skip Bayless would do something like that? Really? I mean, it no, should. I, By the I, way, I'm I pretty sure him. Joe Pleasance goes down as a buzzer beater. He hit two Ooh. clutch free throws with a second left in. Alba line Christian. Yeah. Wow. Down to Texas. Gotcha. It's a technicality it buzzer beater. Excitement, though. <laughs> it's not as exciting. You know, well, you're pretty exciting if you ask me. <laughs> yeah. Joe, Joe Pleasant, 60% free throw shooter. Sinks both while his teammate looks up at God with his arms crossed. And Abilene Christian, they're going to Christian. All right. I will say on the last to close out college basketball, if you want last thing, if Gonzaga really wants to turn full heel, uh, there's a group of brothers up in Washington entering the transfer portal that are pretty good. The grow brothers. Yeah. That'd be sick. That would be sick. They also have the number one high school recruit, I believe, right now. Yeah, no, I think. Uh, yeah, I think one because of they're recruited, I think that's a sign. Personally, I think that that is like a big sign of like becoming a blue blood if you can consistently draw top recruiting classes. And I think Gonzaga has finally reached that point the last couple of years or so. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Yeah, I mean, when you get a guy with a bum like Timmy is like on people's drafts radars. I mean, yeah. I'd want to go there too. All right. Well, we'll move on to our final topic for the day. We already kind of covered baseball. Uh, we'll move on to the final topic of the day. That is uh, this upcoming weekend. Georgia. Georgia. Thank you, Josh. The whole day through. Thank you. Oh, never not right. The Masters Tournament is this weekend, Augusta National. Mark, why don't you give us a quick preview of the weekend? What we're looking at. Tell us some big storylines. We want to go see through. at Augusta National this upcoming weekend. So obviously the biggest storyline going in is Jordan Spieth. Is it? He top. I, I would say so. I would disagree, but I'll let you um, go. I can see it. You know, I would so I personally before we start, I would argue that the biggest storyline is is Dustin Johnson trying to win two masters in six months. That that's what I believe the second biggest story. Was. Well, if you have any 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 information on the tournament, the biggest story is going to be Bryson. But I'll let you guys go. Well, I saw that video earlier. I did he's, see that uh, video. Yeah, Bryson. I, he's also swinging a new driver. The driver he's used in previous tournaments was four years old. Right. <laughs> it's the the new one is the driver that he like engineered. Right. It's a prototype that he did with Cobra. It's a um. Co- Cobra Red Speed Prototype, which is their new line of drivers, but he he helped them engineer this one. Uh, so that you know that's big because Bryson might be hitting 430 yard drives. We don't know. Um, he's swinging very hard on the range, but you know Austin's favorite golfer, Jordan Spieth, he's finally coming off a win, which I was so happy to see him win. Like. I started watching it on Sunday and I was talking to my dad because I was home for Easter and you know, my dad's as big of a golf guy as I am. And we were talking, we were like, he's got to win this one, right? He's a Texas boy. It's been four years. He's, he's playing in his home state. A lot of people there are pulling for him. Like it just seemed like the one he was going to win the to break the drought. And he played so well, even on Sunday, we give Jordan Spieth a lot of shit about how he plays on Sundays. And he played very well on Sunday. Um, so I think that's big going in. The Bryson thing is big going in. Yeah, and Dustin Johnson. I mean, he's probably is he the actual betting favorite? I haven't looked at the odds, but I yeah, was, it wouldn't it would surprise me if it was anyone else. Yeah, yeah. He, he is. Um, I know. You know it's the first time a major has been played this quickly. You know, they played in November, now they're playing in April. It's the first major to go back to back as the majors being played in golf. Um, what from what I've heard, uh, because this is the sort of thing I look into because I'm a fucking loser. Uh, <laughs> apparently, the greens are very fast right now, 
it's going to be playing a lot tougher than it was in November. That was the grounds crew's main focus. Mm. They were like, Augusta played way too easy in November. We're going to be playing it tough this time around. So the rough is thicker and the greens are faster. Wait, so I got a question. Yeah. So the grounds crew at the country club just gets to decide how the tournament works? Yeah. Yep. Yes. Yep. That's really fucking stupid, actually. I, I, I understand it's like tradition and like, ah, uh, but like, huh? It's for every tournament ever at any point. I, I know, yeah, but that, like, that just sounds really dumb. That because they decide when they want to mow. Sure, but like, like, why, usually, should some, like why should some random dick piston get to tell, get to determine how the tournament gets played? Well, because he. No, because there's usually a standard. Like U.S. Open courses, the fairways are always <laughs> short. It, they're they're always short and faster, and the greens are always medium speed. But the rough is always the thickest part. Whereas the Masters, it's usually everything's pretty much medium. The rough's always a little medium. The greens usually aren't as fast. But <laughs> at Augusta, there's so many trees where you don't have to worry about the rough as much. Just avoid the trees. So for this time though, they saw how easy it played in November. Because the greens were slow, the fairways were fast. You could, you know, you could hit a mile long drive and you would end up like you would always end up good. So they decided we're going to make it a little harder this time around, being just a six month turnaround. Um, so I guess it's playing a lot tougher than it was in November, which I like. I always prefer when a Masters champ is like worthy 10 under at the most. Oh my God. No, but I like to see. Gosh, like, you're like 75 no. years old. What the hell are we doing here? No, but I always feel that at Augusta, it's cooler to see the lower yeah. scores win. You know, you, you don't works, want to see right? someone like lowest score 26 wins. under yeah. over the weekend. That's cool That's to see my, the lowest scores win. My hot take is that the winner will not be 10 under or better. I think they're going to get destroyed at this court. I, yeah, I, I think, think I think it's going to be around five, six, seven is going to be the winner. I think yeah, I, that's what I, that's what that I sounds, want. I that want a brutal. Yeah, yeah. Uh, yeah, I yeah want the course is really allegedly fast, playing man. disgustingly fast, and knowing all those yeah. greens, that doesn't sound fun to play. You, like the sixteenth green, if it's really fast, like. Yeah. You're screwed. Like those par threes are going to become so much tougher. It's kind of fun though when watching golf to see even the professionals be like normal sometimes. Like it's fun to have more bogeys as much as it's like more fun to see them just be better. But it, it's it's nice to remember that like oh these guys are you know yeah if if they're not on the green for a birdie putt they're probably going to bogey that hole. Let's just yeah. be honest. They're not yeah. ups and downs aren't happening. And I like to see the really low scores, like the, you know, they'll finish at like 25 under. They can do that at the Valspar Championship all they want. Not have my, respect. hashtag not at my Augusta. Have some respect for Jordan Spieth. Come on. Well, okay. I liked how he played at the, at the Valero because that course was also playing tough that weekend. I thought um, TPC San Antonio was playing pretty tough. For how they Malero, All right. <laughs> um, but yeah, at the majors, I sort of want to see guys struggling more because they're the biggest tournaments. <clears throat> and we saw some guys like it isn't a major, but it's the fifth major. But at the players, like guys were struggling in the week before. Um, what was before? I don't remember what was before the players, but it was Jack Nicholas course. Uh. Jack had designed it and it was playing super yep. tough. And I, I sort of like that at some of the bigger courses, the bigger events. Yeah. Have the, have them play more tough, you know, have the guys make more bogeys. Like y'all are no fun. I want my, so I don't want to see 40 break. under. All right. <laughs> yeah. a video game. I don't mind it. I, I really like tough courses too. Uh, it's really fun. I feel like the tough courses versus like easy ones is kind of like the baseball argument of like, I like the universal DH. I like runs. And the other guy's like, I love a pitcher's duel. To be fair, the universal DH, I, I will just counter that and say, I get, I get the sentiment, but the argument yeah. of the universal DH has less to do with run production and more to do with the fact that it's stupid that two different leagues have two different rule sets. That's yeah. beside the point. That's I it. agree. Um, but yeah, I'm, 
I think this is going to be one, like, obviously the best Masters in recent memory is Tiger winning two years ago. Hell like, yes, it was. Ago. Josh knows. We went to yeah. Wade's on Sunday. I was Sunday red. Both wearing red. It was great. I'm kind of – I kind of hope they don't talk too much about Tiger. They're going to. They ran oh, a little special on Sports so Center about, much it. about it. I know, but, like – the last time I saw the coverage about this, it was like it felt like he was dead, and we talked about that. Yes, and they did it not too long ago too. At the was yes, was the, was the players recent? It was, like three it was three you know, ago a month less ago. than a month ago. Yeah. Okay, two, so two leading weeks. up to the players, they did the whole thing too. They had the whole coverage. Everyone wore red on Sunday. I was like, this guy ain't <laughs> dead. He's yeah. fine. Okay. He's, <laughs> I like I liked the wearing red on Sunday. Sure, He's but they're gonna do it again. You know, it's gonna be fucking lame. All right. Hated you know it's yeah. going to be lame this weekend. Yeah. Um, even if, like, it's already been confirmed he's not making the trip. I was sort of hoping he was going to make the trip, it, it be, albeit in a wheelchair or something, just to be there. Yeah. I mean, yeah. You're, what, what, he what is he walk. doing better on, on this weekend? Nothing. Yeah. Like, but he's not going to be making the trip. So wow. I think you're it's, right. It's weird to see Augusta without him there. He's, even when he was hurt and couldn't play in the Masters, he yeah. went there. I don't think uh, – yeah, he was there at the championship dinner. I mm-hmm. don't think he'd go if he couldn't walk right. Like, I don't think he'd show weakness like that. And I think he's still like that a, psycho. Like a real FDR kind of thing. Yeah, like – yeah, like I think he's insane. Like I think if he shows up in a wheelchair or like with a cane or something, he's going to be like, these guys think I'm a fucking joke. And he's like, fuck, like, I'm, I'm a competitor. He wants to win another tournament. Like, he's a psycho. Whether you think I'm crazy for thinking he's going to do it or not, this guy wants to win another tournament. Well, Guaranteed. I, I will say I have, I've had the conversation with my housemate, too. Like, do you think Tiger's going to win? Do you, well, first of all, his question was, do you think Tiger's going to golf again? And I said, that's going to depend on whether or not he can walk. If he can walk, he's going to golf. Yeah. Uh, but, you know, winning another tournament is a whole different question. I – I do think he's going to golf. I think he's going to – I also do think he's going to golf. 100%. Yeah. Like, yeah. That, that one, I'd put money on that. Like, I really think that's going to – to say that he'd win another tournament or especially even another major would be would be absurd. I'd hope yeah. it happens. But there'd be no – like, you, I couldn't put money on that. That'd be stupid. Yeah. No chance. This guy can't walk right now, and he's 45 years old. <laughs> What's the chance of that? Like, prove me wrong again, Tiger, please. It was that we wanted to Mark just got up and left. Maybe it's chicken, or maybe we got mac and cheese. <laughs> I guess. Maybe. Um, I don't know. What do you got? You want to do our FanDuel lineups? Does everyone do it? Uh, sure. Yeah. Uh, who wants to go first? I'll go. I'll All go. Right. First. All right. Um, by the way, Austin, uh, couldn't get in on the second, like the Nets or the Bucks prop bet. Sorry, the interrupt is never came on. Like the, the player props never showed up. So. Ever. But, uh, if you go to my my little fan duel lineup here, Mark, you have mac and cheese. What happened there? No, I went to the bathroom. Oh, oh. nice. Good stream. Oh, yeah. Very solid. All right. Nice. Uh, <laughs> so, <laughs> so, uh, I kind of I kind of took the approach of three good, three bad in a South Africa or sorry, three good, two bad in a South African. And uh, so how I played this one. That's usually my bit. Yeah, I know. It's your guy too. I did take Louie. Yeah. That little that little guy does really well at Augusta. That's so, true. He was in the thick of it this past November. Yeah, yeah. He, he had a shot. Uh so I took him at 9300. Uh up lower than that I have uh, Ryan Palmer. I assume most people would have this dude in a tournament thing because he's mad cheap at 8000. He's made 10 of 11 cuts and averages 85 fantasy points a weekend. Um, I he, he's a really solid golfer. Yeah. He's, uh, also, looks like, uh, looks like a father, so maybe a good handyman around the house and stuff, you know. Uh, closing it out on the cheapness, I got everyone's favorite golfer now, of course, my new favorite Twitter follower, uh, Burned Weisenberger, the Nazi himself. Oh. No. I do. What? What? I made a joke to Nunez before we started, before you two joined. I was like, yeah, I'm thinking about taking Burn Weisberger 
because he would he would play well at the club that didn't allow black people oh, until the seventies. <laughs> oh my god, dude! I mean, if anyone could do good in a in a plantation field like this, it's it's Burn the Nazi Weisberger. Jesus, I got him in, I got him in seventy eight hundred. Uh, now to the guys who could actually win this thing. Uh, for funsies, I took Jordan Spieth. Uh, I mean, he's just hot. He's hot right now. He seems to be in the best mental state that he has in the last, like, four years. So maybe maybe this yeah. is his time. Maybe this is his time. Uh, next up, I went with uh, John Rahm, my favorite non-American golfer. Um, I don't know. John Rahm's really fun to root for. He's, he's not very, like, outgoing. So he just kind of is a humbly good golfer, which most are, I guess. But, like, it's fun to watch. I like John Rahm. Uh, and then I don't know why. I don't know why. I don't even like this pick. I don't know if I like him at 11-6. I went with Brooks because I feel like he's kind of – he has an edge on his shoulder when he plays at the majors. Like, there's something about him that he likes to do well at majors. He's hurt. better at majors. He is hurt. That's what I'm saying. I know he's hurt. He's coming he's off – limping around on the course. I, yes, I, I know, would he, like him at a much lower price point. 11.6 I thought was way too high for that's what I, I just yeah. feel something. I don't know. I don't know. Maybe for a guy who's not even going to finish the weekend and not because he has, he's going to get cut because he's going to quit because his leg's going to snap. I don't know. I just feel like at the majors, like, yes, if he had a knee problem at Valero last weekend, he would have walked off after the fifth tee. He doesn't care about those. But, like, he just has – I think he's a different beast come majors time. And I No, you're right. He is. Like, I don't know. I, I just have this weird sneaking suspicion for him. So it's expensive, but I took Brooksy. Right, the U.S. Well, least... Open he won was at Pebble, wasn't it? When? I think, I think he won a U.S. Open at Pebble. Oh, yeah, yeah. I think, I think, I think you're right. He's only yeah, – he's got five, I think. At least I know I'm top three now after hearing that lineup. Uh, I'll, you know, I'll like go next. I'm, a, I'm team analytics. Oh, God. Team so, analytics. Um, Listening to a couple podcasts about the Masters today, you know, I kind of know the, in the ins and outs. You're a fucking you know? nerd. You guys are losing, it's, um, right? It's yeah, like Mark said earlier, it's going to be a tough course. Um, it's going to be tougher to miss fairways, and it's going to be tougher to play irons into the green. They're going to be playing really fast. So uh, I did a bit of analytics, looked up best the best uh, green percentages, the best driver percentages, you know, fairways. Um, and I kind of just took compiled the best five golfers I could uh, before my sixth golfer, who was just a, who I think might just have a chance at winning it. Uh, I went with Abraham answer, um, Kevin Kistner and Corey Connors as my three cheap ones. Um, all guys who drive pretty well, drive pretty straight. They also have pretty decent iron play. They should just play around par and I hope they can make the cut. I don't see any of these guys really coming out and competing for, for it on Sunday, I, but I, I, I like all three of those golfers. I really like that Kisner pick. It, it was hard for me to leave him out of the yeah. lineup. I thought that that's a really good value pick for this weekend. And Connors, you know, Con Corey Connors coming off a couple good performances in a row at the players in Texas and Valero, Texas, two top 15 finishes. Um, I think he came in like third in the one before it. I'd, yeah, Arnold Palmer, he finished third. So he's yeah, he's been off. playing well. He's been playing well. He he hits pretty well off the tee box, so that should be fine. Um, then in the more, more expensive players, I went with Patrick Reed, a guy who's generally good at driving the ball straight um, and putts really well. Um, two things at the Masters that if you hit fairways and you putt well, you're going to be in it till the end. It doesn't really matter how you get onto the green as long as uh, you start from a fairway, you're finishing with a – at worst, two putt. And then, um, of course, Morikawa, the legend himself, hits 70% of fairways on drives, is the best iron player probably in the game, him and Justin Thomas, and then also putts with some of the best as well. He's not going to have the length that some of these guys are, but um, I think he'll be fine to uh, just, again, stay by par and stay in contention because I think this is going to be a tough course for people to – really pull away in. And then my most expensive, I talked about him earlier. I'm really doing it for the factor that I want to follow him this weekend is Bryson Shambo. He came out and said that the fairways are going to roll 
They're going to roll like they've never rolled on this course before. And he's actually even picked up. He, he played a practice round with Bubba Watson, trying to find mm-hmm. new angles on where to shoot on this course. So he's going to be teeing up and aiming in different places, trying to cut more corners, trying to go even longer. And if he's, so if Bryson's on his game, he's teeing up in the afternoon as well on Thursday, which suits him well, because it'll be warm, 70 degrees, fast place. I mean, he's going to, he's going to be going nuts. Uh, if he plays well, he could run away with this thing. So that's going to be my pick for, uh... oh, he also, you know, he, he, he pulled back on the statement, but he did say that the Masters really does play as a par 68. Uh, let it be known. So. See, the only thing I have, the only problem I have with Bryson this week is, yeah, it's, you know, you can ask Bubba about these angles all you want. I don't think Bryson can shape his shots like Bubba. Uh, no, no one can, shape, no one can shape a driver like Bubba. So it's, you know, it's great if you want to hit this big hook around the corner at like seven, you know, but I don't know if he's able to do it on command like Bubba can when he hits that big, that massive slice he does around the corner. Like I was told to watch out for hole two. Okay. Yeah. Two. Bryson's like, going to do something hours. obscene at two, apparently with a crazy driver. So. Um, so yeah, I, I'm interested in how Bryson plays this week, just because I don't know if he can shape the ball like Bubba and, um, so I'll get to my lineup. Uh, I went I went with my usual approach of three cheaper guys and three more expensive guys. Um, I sort of talked through a little bit of this with Nunez at the uh, before we started the actual recording. Um, my cheapest. I'm gonna go with a uh, an older guy. He's been playing super well this year. Um. Nunez, this isn't my joke lineup, so I'm going to get uh, to that. Freddie Couples? You have Freddie Couples out there? No, no, no. Not that old. Um, <laughs> I have another lineup that I'll get to after this. Uh, but a guy who's been playing really well this year, he's made a lot of cuts. He was at one point fifth in the FedEx Cup standing, so he, he won a tournament, and he's been playing with Stuart Sink at 7,300. He's played at Augusta a number of times. Um, so I like Stu with his experience. He's, you know, like I said, he's eight out of 13 cuts, but that doesn't really like show how well he's played at times this year. And I think with his experience there, he knows exactly how to play this course. I think that's a solid pick. Um, the second cheapest a guy who's been playing out of his mind recently, won a tournament a few weeks ago, Billy Horschel, who has my least favorite pre putt routine in golf. <laughs> um, it, Josh and Austin, have you seen this? His, I, no. I might have. I don't know. His clap back to that fan. Uh, that was, was also very funny. So, Wait till um, you see Brooks pre, uh, pre putt routine this weekend. Oh, I thought. Hey, Ken, give me a read. Yeah. Yeah. No, but before Horschel like gets over a putt, he like stands over it and then he like inches closer to it and he inches the putter closer, then he inches closer again, he inches the putter. He does that like four or five times. He starts standing off from the ball and he just inches his way towards the ball. It's a pain in the ass to watch. Sounds provocative. It's sensual. It, it, it's very sensual. It. Um, He's just getting getting vibing with the ball, you know? He's got to feel the ball. But I, he's a pain in the ass to watch, but he's also been playing out of his mind recently, so I like the horse will pick. Um, Next cheapest, he's in my lineup almost every time we do this. Joaquin Neiman, the guy's just so good at golf. He never misses cuts. He's always, you know, in the, like, he's always under par. Joaquin Neiman just shoots under par. He hasn't missed a cut this year. I think he might have missed two last year during the entire season. So, big fan of him. Um Next guy also only missed two cuts, but only in eight tournaments in the U.S., Tommy Fleetwood. Uh, Tommy always plays well in the big tournaments. He's always in the hunt for majors. He's just a really good golfer that I, I wish he spent more of his time over here and not playing on the European Tour because I love watching him play. Um, so I think Tommy's going to be up there 
towards the top of the leaderboard. And then my two really expensive guys, uh, the only two guys I have over 10,000. I also have Spieth um, coming off that win in Texas. It, you're right, Josh. His mental state is so much better than it's been the past few years. I saw yep. a video. It was like a compilation of a bunch of interviews he had before and after tournaments where he's like, yeah, I don't have it right now. Yeah, I don't have it right now. He said that for four years. And then coming off the last week, he's like, I've got it. And this is a guy he's won a Masters before. He's won, is it three majors? I think I think he won a PGA, a Masters, and a US Open. Or a, I want to say three. four. I think it's three. It's only three? Yeah, he's going for the for championship, but that's not a major. Oh, okay, maybe that. Um, so, I, yeah, I think he won a, a, a PGA, a British, and a Masters. Um, so he's been there in the big spots. I like him this week. He's, he moved up a lot in the betting odds too. He's like, he's, he's the third, he's third best. Number one is DJ at seven twenty five, eight fifty for Bryson and nine fifty for Spieth. I I really like that play on Spieth. I'm a little scared for Spieth. You know, he's just one of those guys who could always just have a blow up. And at the Masters, a blow up isn't a bogey or a double bogey. It's like, you're rolling yeah, into the water. The three, you're, you're doing Tiger. Lo- on 12. On yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah. yeah Colossal. Augusta is an 11 on 12. So <laughs> yeah. we'll, we'll yeah. see. But I, I like Jordan this week. And then I got to go with the guy. It, I know DJ's ranked number one in the world. Yeah, I don't care. For me, the best, the best golfer on tour is Justin Thomas. Yes. He just is, in my opinion. So – I, I think I that's think the that, consensus pick by people to win so far from what I've seen. Yeah, it just seems like one he's going to win. I don't know what he's it is. He's never done it, has he? No, he's never won a – I don't think he's won a major yet. Um, So it just seems like he's due – he's so good. And this is one of those – he's so close with Tiger. Him and Tiger are very close friends. It just seems like one of those do it for Tiger things because he can't be there. Yeah. I've just got a feeling about it. So I, I went with Justin Thomas at 11 8. So that's my lineup. I also, like I said, have a joke lineup uh, in a different competition. Um, we've got Bernhard Longer, Freddie Couples, uh, Larry Mize, VJ Singh, Mike <laughs> Weir, and uh, <laughs> Simon Lyle. So, or Sandy. Sandy. No, Phil. He's playing on the senior tour these days. <laughs> yeah, but I, I wanted to go with the real old guys. So let's see. I I think Bernhard Longer might make the cut just because he made the cut in November. But the other five, no chance they make the cut. Uh, All right. Well, move over, motherfuckers. It's time for the winning lineup here. Uh, I Fun fact for you, in all the FanDuel golf contests I've done, I don't think I've ever actually had the winner in my lineup before. Uh, I've had it once, I think. I've, I've made a good amount of money on FanDuel Golf, but I've never actually won the, gotten the winner. So that's fine because uh, all six guys that I picked this weekend, they're going to tie in first place. They're going to play so many playoff play holes, and they're just going to decide, you know what, fuck it. All six of you, you win the Masters. They're all gonna six green jackets second. given out in 2021. It's going to be incredible. All right. The first one of those guys, I've never heard of this guy before, but he's made 9 of 13 cuts. Not a bad percentage. And at 7,600, I'm taking Mackenzie Hughes. I couldn't even tell you where he's from. I couldn't he's tell you whether or not he's a good golfer. Uh, who knows, right? He's solid. He's been playing really well this year. He right. didn't show up on my analytics, so. All right, well, you know, I'm team fuck your analytics. So, oh. second, second from the bottom is everyone's favorite South African, Louis Usazen. Uh, I pick him. I pick him all the time. And I will say, so this lineup for me is kind of like one guy who probably sucks in Mackenzie Hughes and then five guys who could legitimately finish top 10. Uh, and that's really all I'm asking for here. And Louis Usazen is one of them. He was right in contention back in November. I expect him to be right back at it here in April. Uh, next up in the, uh, in, in, the, in the lineup here is someone that I also take very often, and that's everyone's favorite South Korean. He hits the straightest shot on the entirety of the PGA Tour, and that's Sung J M. Again, another man that was right in the mix, in the thick of it back six months ago and he's back at it again but has an asian golfer ever won the masters before probably not right um not that i can well, think of before 2021 when more cow wins no before well before 2021 when yeah i meant like a native born asian 
Yeah, you're talking about a master's, right? Or are you saying any a master's specifically? Yeah. I assume no. I, I don't think so. Yeah, anyways, um, so we got Sung JM. Next up, Tony Finau, the man who's always in second place. Well, this time he's gonna be tied for first place with five other people. Uh and then at 11-1, we have I-5's official pick to win the Masters this year. And by I-5, I mean that's the that's the name of my house. Uh, and my housemate, Zach, has put his money on Supreme Patty Cantlay to win the Masters this year. Uh, so I'm rolling with that for the other half of Zach squared. And then my most expensive golfer is uh, the man that I always take. And that's Xander Shalalalalalalalofly at 11-3. This oh, man, yeah. another man right in the mix. I'm telling you, this lineup is the is the tits, man. Okay, this lineup's fantastic. Anyways, I also have another. I also uh, have an update uh, on the lineup that I've talked about doing before that I'm gonna do this time. Uh, and that's the Asian sensation lineup. We've got it. Six. That's probably a pretty good lineup, actually. Six Asian golfers. Fun fact for you: there are only six Asian golfers competing in the Masters this year. So, Three really let me guess them. Can we guess them? Okay, well, let me let me get to it because I have a couple of honorable mentions, otherwise known as people I thought were Asian who are not Asian. Uh, first of all, being Tony Finau, who I thought was Asian, he's uh, Samoan. That is in Polynesia. It's Oceania, not not Asia. The second one being Vijay Singh, who is from Fiji, which is also not in Asia. So those are my two honorable mention. People who I thought were Asian that are not Asian. I thought Vijay Singh was Indian for certain, and he's not. So, um, yeah. Anyways, yep. Sure. Why don't you tell me what Asians are in my lineup? So, well, okay. You said Sung J M, right? He is Korean. Yes, that's true. That count. Matsuyama. Uh, Hideki Matsuyama is the Japanese man in my lineup. Yes. Is C T Pan in the? C T Pan is Taiwanese. Okay. Uh, but he did not make my lineup, no. Morikawa. Colin Morikawa is Japanese-American. He did make my lineup. That's true. Kevin Na. Kevin Na is Korean-American. That is that is true. We're one more, right? We need one more. Mark, what do you got? Well, Mark knows. We had this conversation earlier. Oh, I, I thought Mark didn't follow the Asian I couldn't name. I couldn't name him, but I know him. Like I, I just looked it up now, but I, I didn't know. The last one is, is Si Woo Kim. Yeah. He's also mm-hmm. Korean. So I in my lineup, I have Colin Morikawa, Sung J.M., Hideki Matsuyama, Si Woo Kim, Kevin Na. And my sixth entry is not C.T. Pan, but it is the man who I'm calling the honorary Asian for the weekend. Uh, the golfer that my housemate says is the one professional athlete that he can beat the shit out of, and that's Matthew Fitzpatrick. That guy is a twig, and he might be the whitest human I've ever seen compete in professional athletics. He is the honorary Asian for this weekend at the Masters, and he's in the Asian sensation lineup. It's not that bad of a lineup. No, it really isn't. (laughs) So that lineup is going to be competing for money as well. Is there LPGA on the uh, on Fanduel? I wish. Uh, because oh, yeah. I was going to say, you should do a you wouldn't Asian be able to afford the Asian lineup. Asian yeah, the Asian lineup. sensation lineup on the LPA, LPGA would go insane. It's, yes, it's it's best the top six players. <laughs> <laughs> All right, well, that was it for our Masters contest. We'll see what happens come Monday. We'll see. We'll, we'll, okay. when, we have, when we come back next week, we'll have a couple things for certain. We'll have the results on my stupid opening day home run data, and we will have – Whoever the I, hell, I personally find it very interesting. Whoever the hell won the green jacket, we will know come the time we record our next episode. So, a couple of interesting things to uh, learn about, or wait, wait for, or look out for. Look out for. That's what I was looking. That's the term I was looking for. Uh, I don't know what else we're gonna do next week. We'll figure it out. Who knows? Right? We'll talk about like dicks or something like that. Uh, yeah, Josh likes it. Ah, ah, ah. I got a money back guarantee on the Masters. Uh, you know, if any of the viewers want to get that, that Morikawa finishes top five, money back guarantee. All right. Austin is guaranteeing money back guarantee if you play some. Are we betting that? Top, I bet. Oh, the viewers are. <laughs> I mean, I'll bet it right now. Okay. Are you a viewer? I'll bet it right now, too. I don't even have a book. Jeez, I guess I'm about to bet it right now. All right. Well, that about does it for episode five of Hot Soap After Dark. Um, before we head out, make sure to follow us on Twitter 
at hot stove pod that's at hot stove pod on twitter and here on the youtube side make sure to smash the subscribe button smash the like button smash the notification bell as well and leave a comment if you feel like commenting uh for my three co-hosts i'm zach nunez uh mark just took his shirt off and we will see you you the next time (laughs) <laughs> like there we I'm will see you part. the next time here on the hot <laughs> stove podcast goodbye everyone. <laughs> wow